Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. In today's video, I'll be using Paper Rose Studios Katie's Tea Party Collection. Paper Rose Studio never disappoints with their beautiful collections. And I like that they offer a variety of different styles. I'll be using the 6x6 size, but it's also available in the 12x12 size. And I do have links in the description box for all of the products I use in this video. Here's a look at the paper collection. It includes 18 double-sided pattern papers, three each of 12 designs. I love all the beautiful colors. This collection includes lots of lovely floral patterns, and on the back side, there's a nice tone on tone design. It's nice to have those muted patterns to help tone down some of the busier designs. There is one sheet with lots of different images. You could fussy cut those out, or you could just use it as pattern paper. Many of the images on this sheet are also in the embossed die cut pack. I love having three of each design. That way you don't have to choose a favorite of the front or back side of the pattern paper. Now here's a look at the embossed die cut pack. I've used some of Paper Rose's embossed die cuts before and they're just stunning. The pack includes four A5 sheets and all of the die cut pieces simply pop out. No fussy cutting required. Every single image and sentiment in the pack has an area with the embossing. It's a beautiful shiny finish like a spot gloss. I'm trying to move the paper so the light catches on all the beautiful embossed areas. The pack includes mostly images. There are two sentiments, enjoy and love. Since I love making multiples of the same card, I did pick up two of the embossed die cut packs. Here's the final sheet, so many beautiful images. So let's go ahead and get started on my cards. I will be finishing off almost all of the paper pad. I'll have just a few small scraps left over. I will be using some card sketches for inspiration. The first sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. It's number 607. And if you are interested in any of the sketches I use in this video, I share all of that information on my coordinating blog post. That link is provided in the description box below, or you can simply head over to christymarcotte.com. For card design number one, I selected this lovely floral paper with green, blue, and white, layered it on some dark blue cardstock. For this small rectangle on the center of the card, I'm using some white shimmer cardstock. I selected this lovely tone-on-tone -tone green pattern paper, cut out two circles using Paper Rose's stitch circle dies. I'm adding one of the die cut images. Before adhering it down, I did put a scrap cardstock piece between the two circles. That way the die cut piece lays nice and flat. All of the sentiments I'm using in this video are from Paper Rose Studios Happy Birthday Sentiment Sheet Set. This is one of their newer releases. It includes 10 A5 sheets. You'll get two of each color. Three of the designs have beautiful foiling on them. There's rose gold, silver, and gold foil. And the set also includes black and white sentiments without any foiling. The sentiment sheets are great if you don't feel like doing any stamping, and they really do include a ton of sentiments. It's mostly happy birthday, but there are a few other sentiments included. And if you make a lot of Christmas cards, there's another version with Christmas sentiments. For this card, I selected happy birthday in silver foil. I cut a fishtail on the right and left side, layered it on the same dark blue cardstock, and I'll be adhering it on the lower green circle. First, I'll add a scrap cardstock piece on the right and left side, then I'll adhere it down using glue. I'm adding a couple other die cut images. I put the blue flowers at the top on the left side, and I'm adding a cluster of white flowers underneath the sentiment on the right. 
So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. For card design number two, the card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 602. I selected another lovely floral paper for the background. The backside of the floral paper has a small leaf pattern design. I'm layering it on some dark green cardstock. For the narrow strip on the left side, I'm adding a tone-on-tone -tone pink design. I'll put adhesive on the back and adhere this panel on my card front. Then I'll layer it on the same dark green cardstock. Put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. All of my cards in this video are American Standard A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. Next, I'll add one of the lovely floral die cut pieces. Put glue on the back and adhere it on the leaf pattern paper. I'm using another happy birthday sentiment, this time in black and white. Before adhering it down, I will put some scrap cardstock pieces on the right and left side. That way it stays nice and level since it's going over the die cut piece. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. For many of my cards, I'm not adding bling or extra dimension. That way I have some cards on hand I can mail easily without paying additional postage. For card design number three, the card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number 30. Using this beautiful white daisy paper for the background, layering it on some blue cardstock. For the narrow strip that goes across the card, I'm using white shimmer cardstock. And for the two inch panel on the left side of the card, I'm using some of the green tone on tone design. I layered it on the same blue cardstock. Before adhering that piece in place, I'll put some scrap cardstock pieces above and below the white strip. Then I'll put glue on the back and adhere it on the left side of the card. Next, I'll add one of the circle die cuts. It's a beautiful floral arrangement. I'll put some scrap cardstock on the right side of that circle before adhering it down. And it does have the small sentiment love. For a final finishing touch, using the same blue cardstock, I'll cut a small banner and adhere it in the upper left hand corner. I first cut a fishtail on the bottom, cut the right side in slightly at an angle, then did the same thing on the other side. I don't always show this part in the video, but I like to use some of the thin scrap pieces and put them on the inside of the card, just for that little extra detail. For card design number four, the card sketch is from Sugar Pea Designs. This is Sugar Sketch number seven. I have another beautiful floral paper for the background. And since it is such a busy design, for the two diagonal strips, I'm using some of the tone on tone patterns. I have those strips just a little bit longer than my panel. I'll put adhesive on the back, adhere them in place, then I'll flip over my card panel, use my scissors to trim off the extra. That way they're perfectly flush on the right and left side of the card. I'll layer this panel on some black cardstock, put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Next, I'll add a stitched oval die cut, and I did cut this from white shimmer cardstock. I'll glue that down on the left side. This card will be featuring one of the vases with a beautiful bouquet. I did pop up the die cut image with some foam dimension. I'm adding a happy birthday sentiment in black and white. I'll cut the right side at an angle. And before adhering it down, I will add that scrap cardstock piece underneath the sentiment on the right side where it goes off of the oval. Then I'll adhere it in place. Using a scrap piece of dark green cardstock, I'll cut a small banner and adhere it in the upper right hand corner. Then for a final finishing touch, I'm adding some of Paper Rose Studios clear crystals. I'll put three around the sentiment on the right side and two on the left side of the die cut image. I am using an embellishment wand to pick up the crystals, putting down a small drop of Barely Art glue, then pressing them in place. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. 
For card design number five, the card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number three. This is one of my favorite cards. For the larger panel, I'm using the beautiful floral paper. I have the tone on tone pink pattern for the smaller panel at the top of the card. I'm layering both of these pieces on some white shimmer cardstock. Then I'll layer this piece on some black cardstock. Sketch designs like this are perfect for mixing and matching several different pattern papers. For this small rectangle on the left side of the card, I'm using another tone on tone design. This is a dark blue and it has a bunch of tiny plus signs all over the background. I'll layer that piece on some black cardstock, put ATG tape on the back and adhere it on the left side of the card. I'll be adding one of the larger die cut images. Beautiful bouquet in a vase with the sentiment love. I already have foam dimension on the back and I'll adhere it on the blue pattern paper piece. I'm adding the sentiment happy birthday. Used one of the silver foil sentiments. Layered it on some black cardstock, and I'll adhere it in the lower right hand corner. For embellishments, I'm adding some black enamel dots. I'll put three in the upper right hand corner and two in the lower left hand corner. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. For card design number six, the card sketch is from Sugar Pea Designs. This is Sugar Sketch number 51. I selected two pattern papers, a tone on tone pattern and a lovely floral design. Using my corner rounder, around the left two corners. Then I'll layer both of the pattern paper pieces on some green cardstock. For the background of my card, I have some white shimmer cardstock and I'll be layering it on the same dark green cardstock. Put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. Generally for my cardstock layers, I add an additional eighth of an inch. For the very background of this card, the green cardstock layer is an additional fourth of an inch. The white background piece is four inches by five and a quarter inches. I'm adding the sentiment thinking of you in black and white. I cut the left side at an angle and I'll adhere it down with the very right side of the sentiment going off of the floral paper. Next, I'll add one of the circle die cut pieces, beautiful floral image that matches the florals on the pattern paper, and I did pop it up with some foam dimension. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a small banner and adhere it in the upper left hand corner. So there is my finished card, and this time I made a total of six following the design. The first set are similar, one card in the second set, I have the rounded corners on the right side. This was completely by accident since I rounded the wrong corner. With the rounded corners on the right side, I decided to put the sentiment and die cut image on the left side. This is one of my favorite card sketches. It works well mixing two different pattern papers, adding an image and sentiment, and your card is finished. Now moving on to card design number seven. The card sketch is from Reverse Confetti. This is sketch number 24. I think it's been several years since I've used a Reverse Confetti sketch. The company closed down a couple years ago, but I still have some of their sketches printed out, so I thought I would use one for this card. I have two different pattern papers for the background, using some of the leaf pattern on the left side and the pattern paper that has all the different images for the right side. I'll layer both of those on some dark blue cardstock. For the image box, I'm using some white shimmer cardstock, layering it on some dark blue cardstock, and I'll adhere that onto the card. I'm adding one of the beautiful floral die cut images, and also the sentiment thank you. In the upper left hand corner, there are two small banners. I'm using more of the pattern paper, two tone on tone designs. I have the dark blue with the stars and the pink tone on tone with the little arches. I'll cut the bottom at an angle and I'm holding them up together so I can get that same angle cut. Before adhering those down, I will add scrap cardstock and pattern paper pieces, trying to keep them nice and level. 
That way there isn't a noticeable dip at the top where it goes off of the image box. I'll first adhere the blue banner. Then I'll add the scrap cardstock pieces on the left side of it so I can adhere the pink banner on top, overlapping them just slightly. I did end up cutting the banners just slightly shorter than what's indicated on the card sketch. I didn't want the blue banner overlapping the floral die cut image. It's sitting on it just slightly, but it's not covering up the main flowers. I'll cut a fishtail on the right and left side of the sentiment cut apart. And before adhering it down, I will add some scrap pattern paper pieces on the right and left side. That way it stays nice and level. I'll flip over the sentiment and place it on the die cut image. That way I know the size of the scrap pattern paper pieces I need. Then I'll put glue on the back and adhere it in place. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. For the second card, I used different pattern paper because at this point I don't have any full pattern paper sheets left over. So now I'll start looking for card sketches to use up some of those pattern paper scraps. For card design number eight, the card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number 22. I have some white shimmer cardstock for the background. Using some of the small scraps that I do have left over, I have a beautiful floral and a tone on tone dark blue with all the little plus signs. I'll layer the floral and the background piece on some dark blue cardstock, adhere the blue strip across the card slightly more toward the bottom. I'll put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. Now I'll add the two narrow floral strips on the right side of the card, adhere those down with some glue. For the circle element on the card, I'm using another die cut piece, dark blue background with a lovely floral bouquet. I'm also adding the sentiment thank you. It has the beautiful silver foiling. I'll cut the left side at an angle and also the right side since I will be tucking it underneath the circle die cut piece. I'm also adding some scrap cardstock on the left side before adhering it down. And I'll cut the right side just a little bit more. I really don't want that sentiment strip showing underneath the die cut piece. For a final finishing touch, I'll add some of the clear crystals. Put three around the sentiment on the left side and two in the upper right hand corner. The clear crystal pack comes with, I think, four different sizes. I'm using the two smallest sizes on this card. So there is my finished card, and this time I made a total of three following this design. Two are very similar. The other I used some of the white daisy paper, a different die cut piece, and I put a vellum stitch circle die cut underneath that die cut piece just so it stood out a little more against the pattern paper. For card design number nine, the card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 605. I selected three pattern papers for the background, and I think I may have recorded a couple of the cards out of order while I was prepping them. I'll layer all of the pieces on some black cardstock, put ATG tape on the back, and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Next, I'll add a stitch circle die cut, and I did use some shimmer cardstock for that. I cut off the very bottom of the circle, so I have more of a semicircle. I'll put glue on the back and adhere it to the card. Now I'll add several of the die cut images, a couple of beautiful large flowers and some different foliage pieces. I'm adding the sentiment happy birthday in black and white. I'll cut the right side at an angle. I'll adhere the sentiment on the right side at the bottom of the circle. And I did need to move one of the foliage pieces. I had adhered it down just a little too low, wasn't leaving any space for the sentiment. Now I'll add the foliage piece so it sits slightly on top of the sentiment banner. I'll put the smaller flower on the left side of the card, tucking a couple of foliage pieces underneath it. Then I'll add the larger flower on the right side. 
I decided this would be another card not to add any extra foam dimension, so I am adhering everything down with glue. For a final finishing touch, I'm adding a small black banner and adhering it in the upper left hand corner. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. I love the papers on this card. That floral design is just beautiful. Now moving on to my final card design. This is card design number 10. And this card is featuring just a tiny bit of pattern paper. I have some craft cardstock for the background and I'll be layering it on some dark blue cardstock, adding a narrow strip of the green leaf pattern paper on the left hand side of the card. I'll put adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. For the image box, I used some white shimmer cardstock, layered it on some dark blue cardstock. I'm adding a narrow banner at the bottom of the card, but I didn't have a long enough piece of pattern paper to go all the way behind the image box. So I have two different pieces of pattern paper. They're both one inch wide. I'll first add the piece on the left so you see just a little bit of it peeking out on the left side. I'll cut a banner on the right side of the other piece, line the two up together. So now it looks like I have a full banner strip going across the card. On the image box, I'll add one of the larger die cut images, two floral planters. Adhere that down with some glue. For a final finishing touch, I put three glitter stickers on the right hand side. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. So here are all the leftover pattern paper scraps and the die cut images. And I still have quite a few of the die cut images so I could use those on future projects. Now here's another look at the 25 cards I made using Paper Rose Studios Katie's Tea Party 6x6 paper collection. This is a beautiful collection. I love the colors and designs and I really enjoyed using the coordinating embossed die cut images. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. Paper Rose Studio is located in Australia and they do ship their products internationally, but you can also purchase them here in the US and I have links for both locations in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.